This is Unit 2, Lecture 1. Here we look at some basic definitions pertaining to logic. The next lecture identifies common logical fallacies. We'll define logic and argument, sentences, conclusions and premises, deduction versus induction, and validity and soundness. Logic is the study of good and bad arguments. An argument is a set of sentences in which one sentence, the conclusion, is claimed to be proven by the other sentences, the premises. Since the argument is the fundamental unit of philosophical discourse, it's worth spending time on getting to know logic a little better. An argument is made up of sentences. A sentence in logic is any statement that is capable of being true or false. A single grammatical sentence may contain more than one logical sentence. For example, for example, the single grammatical sentence, I am tired and I'm going home, contains two logical sentences. I'm tired is true or false, and I'm going home is true or false. Questions, commands, exclamations, and nonsensical chains of words are not sentences because they are not true or false. Imagine the frustration of being handed a true-false quiz that contains the following items. Number one, what is the capital of Norway, true or false? Number two, shut the door, true or false. Number three, ouch, true or false. Number four, tree apple fork pencil, true or false. Since it would be absurd to respond true or false to any of these, they don't count as logical sentences. An argument is not just any set of sentences. One sentence must be the conclusion, that is the sentence the argument is trying to prove. And at least one other sentence must be a premise a sentence that is offered as proof of the conclusion. Therefore, an argument has at least two sentences, a conclusion and a premise. Here is probably the most famous example of an argument in the history of logic. Socrates is a man, all men are mortal, so Socrates is mortal. The statement Socrates is a man is either true or false, so it's a logical sentence. The statement all men are mortal is either true or false, so it is a logical sentence. And the statement Socrates is mortal is either true or false, so it's a logical sentence. Note that grammatically it is one sentence containing three logical sentences separated by semicolons. Note, too, that it's constructed in such a way that the first two logical sentences are premises and the third sentence is a conclusion. Here's another example of an argument with one premise. He's not rich. And the conclusion, he's poor. Note that it is a single grammatical sentence containing an argument with one premise. And yet another example. If John is a Baptist, then John is Protestant. But John is not a Baptist, so John is not Protestant. Two grammatical sentences, but three logical sentences. It's an argument, though it's not a good one. But we haven't discussed good and bad arguments yet. An argument must have at least two sentences, but the sentences must also be related in a way that one sentence is claimed to be proven by one or more of the others. The first example, I have not eaten since Sunday, is not an argument because it contains only one sentence. The second example, I haven't eaten today and I won't eat tomorrow, has two sentences, but neither is offered as proof of the other. So it's not an argument either. Arguments are either deductive or inductive. Deductive arguments claim certainty, usually based on a logical move from general premises to a more particular conclusion but always making an absolute or universal conclusion. Inductive arguments claim probability only, usually based on a move from particular premises to a more general conclusion, but always based on past observation. Here's an example of a deductive argument. All Methodists are Christians. Sherry is a Methodist. Therefore, Sherry is a Christian. Note that the conclusion implies certainty based on the premises. Note that at this point, we have not discussed whether the premises are true. We'll discuss true and false premises when we discuss good and bad arguments. Here's an inductive argument. Bill is a Christian and believes in transubstantiation. Mary is a Christian and believes in transubstantiation. Gus is a Christian and believes in transubstantiation. So, probably, all Christians believe in transubstantiation. It's based on past observation and offers only a probable conclusion. It's a bad argument, but we're not there that far yet. Once we have an argument and have identified the conclusion and the premise or premises, now it's time to evaluate the argument. An argument is valid when the conclusion must be true if the premises are true. An argument is invalid 
when it's logically possible for the premises to be true and the conclusion to be false at the same time. An argument is sound when it's valid and all of the premises are true. An argument is unsound when it's valid, but at least one of its premises is false. Note especially that only valid arguments can be sound or unsound. Here is an example of an argument that is valid and sound. All humans are mammals, women are human, therefore all women are mammals. If the premises are true, the conclusion must be true, and the premises are true. Here is an example of an argument that is valid but unsound. All humans are reptiles. My cousin Lou is human, therefore my cousin Lou is a reptile. If it were true that all humans are reptiles and Lou is human, then it would have to be true that Lou is a reptile. So it's valid, but the first premise is false, so the argument is unsound. Here's an example of an invalid argument. If Sam is a man, then Sam is human. Sam is not a man, therefore Sam is not human. Note that if Sam is a woman, then the premises are true, but the conclusion is not. So it's logically possible for the premises to be true while the conclusion is false, and that is the very definition of invalid. This is the end of our list of basic lo logic definitions. Next, we define and identify some logical fallacies, along with three questions that logic would have us ask of arguments that we wish to assess.